Hi guys, Craig Beals back with you and we have arrived at the final piece of the mole, being able to take the mass of something and turn it all the way into the number of atoms inside that object. This is huge. We've worked a whole bunch to get to this point. If you've missed any of the stuff up, uh, up to this level, there are plenty of videos ahead of that. I'll put the links to them here or down in this, the description down at the bottom. But we're going to take this thing all the way to the end here right now. And we're just going to start with examples. We're going to use the same process we've been using all the time with moles, these three simple steps. The way we do that is we always figure out what is known or what is given, and then we write that down. We're not going to change anything now that we're getting to the more complex ones. So 2.50 grams of CO2. Now, I want to get my answer in oxygen atoms at the end. The way I do that is just cancel units. So I'm going to set up a conversion to cancel the units, which means I need a conversion factor that has grams of CO2 on the bottom. I'll put that down here so that those cancel the units. I need to go back into all the stuff that I've learned up to this point because I should know now that grams can only turn into one thing. Grams can only turn into moles, which means I could only put moles of CO2 up here. And whenever I see moles and mass, because grams is mass, moles and mass, moles and mass, that's the molar mass. Where do I get the molar mass? I add it up from the periodic table. So I've got to look up all the parts and pieces of CO2 to be able to do this. Let's do that. I'm down here on the periodic table. We've got carbon and we've got oxygen. I realize those are hard to see for you guys, so I'm just going to write them up here. Now carbon, I have one carbon, and each one of those carbons is 12.01 for the mass of one mole. Times that by one, I get 12.01. The reason I'm timesing that by one is I only have one carbon. I'm just trying to keep this consistent all the way through. I know you could shortcut that, but I won't, just so I don't confuse anybody. I've got two oxygens right here in CO2. There are two oxygens. Each one of those oxygens is 15.99 grams. You might be rounding to 16. It's perfectly fine if you do. 15.99 times 2 is 31.98. Then I need to add these two up to figure out the overall mass of one CO2. We should get 43.99. This number is going to go right up here. 43.99 grams in one mole. That's why this is called the molar mass. We cancel the units. Grams of CO2 cancels with grams of CO2. If I stopped doing any work, my answer would be in moles of CO2 right now. But I want oxygen atoms. People start to freak out. Well, what do I do? You stick with the plan right here. You just set up conversions to cancel the units. I need another conversion factor to get rid of moles of CO2. Moles of CO2 on the bottom. That's the only way I can get rid of that. Moles of CO2. The great thing about moles, I can turn them into just about anything I want. Remember, I'm trying to get over into oxygen atoms. We learned earlier on in one of the mole videos something called mole ratios, which means I can take moles of CO2 and I can turn that into moles of something else, like moles of oxygen atoms. Now, how do I do that? Well, I look right up here. Look at CO2. How many oxygen atoms are in one of these CO2s? There are two of them. So I'm going to put a 2 there to represent how many are in there. Look, now we're canceling units. Now I'm in moles of oxygen, which is closer to atoms of oxygen. But I'm not quite there. I need another conversion factor. I'm going to put a line here. I'm going to put moles of oxygen down at the bottom. Moles of oxygen. And I can turn moles of oxygen into atoms of oxygen. Atoms of oxygen. The way I do that is with Avogadro's number. That goes all the way back to the very first lesson of the mole in this whole sequence of videos. And in that lesson, we learned that one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen is equal to one mole of oxygen. Let's cancel these units and look. Now we're in atoms of oxygen, and that's what we wanted our answer in. With the calculator, I'm going to work my way right through here, and I'm going to show you the process. 
five zero right here for grams. Take that times one, which I don't need to do because anything times one is one. That number then would be divided by divided by forty three point nine nine right here. Then I'm going to hit equals just so my calc my little calculator here keeps track. Move this out of the way. The next thing I need to do is times all of that by two. Bring this up times two. Hit the enter button because I'm not using any parentheses to keep track. Then I need to take all of that times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or Avogadro's number. So times 6.02. If you haven't learned this yet, you need to know it. We don't write times 10 to the caret or anything like that. 6.02 EE means times 10 to the 23rd. And then we hit the enter. Now look, we've got 6.84. E stands for times 10 to the 22. 6.84 times 10 to the 22. What are the units with this? The only one I have left that I haven't canceled is atoms of oxygen. Hard to see, but you get the point. And that's what I wanted my answer in. We've made it all the way to the end here. I've got one more example to help you out. If you're sticking with me, you're doing great. We've got a little bit different concept here. We've got a sample of silver nitrate that has a mass of 12.5 grams. How many ions of nitrate, okay, ions of NO3 minus, that's what nitrate is, are present? So we got to work this the other way. The thing is, people always try to remember the formulas. What do I put? How? Where do I? Don't worry about any of that. You write down what you know. That's what you always start with. And what you know is whatever has numbers with it at this point, which is 12.5 grams of what? Silver nitrate. I'm going to write the 12.5 grams. And I need to remember what silver nitrate is. Silver is Ag. And nitrate, when I look on the periodic table, this is unless you don't have it or unless you have it memorized, is NO3. Silver's oxidation state is 1 plus. Nitrate is 1 minus, which means these two even each other out. Silver nitrate is going to be AgNO3. The game plan is no different than it's been the whole time. We just wrote down what we knew. Now we need to set up conversions to cancel the units. So people are like, I don't know what to do next. You always know what to do next. Do you want your answer in grams of silver nitrate? No. You want your grams in ions of nitrate, which means you got to get rid of this. How do you get rid of it? With a conversion factor that has grams of AgNO3 down at the bottom. I can only turn mass or grams into one thing. I can only turn it into the mole. So a mole of AgNO3 goes up here. And where do I get these numbers? Well, I see moles and grams. Grams is mass. Moles and mass, moles and mass, molar mass. That's the molar mass. It's the mass of one mole. I get those numbers right off the periodic table and add them up. In silver nitrate, I've got silver and I've got one of them. I like to put this here just to keep track of everything. Nitrogen, I've got one of those. Oxygen, I've got three. And then I just start putting the masses of everything in here. When I look up silver on the periodic table, silver is 107.87 times one because I only have one of them. Nitrogen, 14.01. I only have one of those. And oxygen, 15.99, but I have three of those. So I'm going to multiply this straight across. That's pretty self-explanatory with these first couple. We're going to get 14.01. The last one down here with oxygen is 47.97. And we add these all together. We get 169.85. This is the molar mass of silver nitrate. The mass goes next to grams. 169.9.85, sorry, 0.85. Cancel units. Have we gotten to our answer yet? We want ions of nitrate? No, we're in moles of silver nitrate. So again, people start to stress out, well, what do I do next? You need a conversion factor to get rid of moles of silver nitrate. Moles 
of Ag NO3 down at the bottom. Nice thing about moles, I can turn them into just about anything I want. So can I turn moles into something that's closer to NO3 minus? Yeah, I can turn it into moles. These are called mole ratios. I can turn that into moles of nitrate ions more or less. I'm going to keep it this way. Where do I get the numbers when I have a mole ratio, two moles? Well, in one mole of silver nitrate, how many nitrates do I have? I have one. Well, look, that's going to work out nicely. I cancel the units, cancel the units. Now I'm in moles of nitrate ions. But I don't want to be in moles of nitrate ions. I want to be in ions of nitrate. Let's make one more conversion factor right down here. Let's get a, uh, rid of moles of nitrate and turn that into ions of nitrate. And the way I do that is one mole is equal to Avogadro's number. So this could say atoms, it could say molecules, it could say anything, but it says ions. And when I'm going from moles into ions or moles into atoms or moles into molecules, I use Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Cancel units. Enter 12.5 times 1, but I don't need to do that, so I'll go straight to divided by, divided by 169.85. I'm going to hit enter just so my calculator can keep track. The next step here is to take all of that times 1 divided by 1, which I don't need to do, but I'm going to do it just to show you we end up with the same thing. The next step over here is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so I need to multiply by that. I hit times 6.02 EE23. That EE means times 10 to the, I hit the enter button and look, 4.43 EE, 4.43 times 10 to the 22. The units for this, the only thing I have left are ions of nitrate. Perfect. If you've made it all the way to this point with me, you're doing fantastic. And this is perfect. The nice thing about moles is once you convert atoms into moles or grams into moles or ions into moles, in chemistry you can convert it into anything else. It's kind of our little universal conversion factor when we get to this level of chemistry. So hang in there, stick with the moles. If you need any other help, there's some links to get you back there. Or you can come on over to Beale Science, and at any point you can go there. I've got probably 75 videos that will walk you through all the concepts of chemistry, concepts of biology, concepts of how-to. But also, you can take a break and watch some things blow up and all of the science experiments that I do. So come on over and check that out. The next thing we're headed to is stoichiometry. If you can do this, the stuff with the mole, the dimensional analysis with the mole, then you're going to master stoichiometry in no time, and those videos are coming up next. So hang in there and keep on learning.